Hey YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Jim and me here. Listen, when I'm starting something new, we're gonna see how this work out. Me and Dark Side. Now you see we got the do-rags on. Now hold on before I say anything. Look, look, listen to the name. Watch the name, y'all. The Do-Rag Chronicles. Ooh, number one. Ooh, I know y'all like that. I know you like that. You know what I'm saying? I got my guy Dark Side with me. Dark Side, what's up with you, bro? Hey, I'm chilling, I'm chilling, I'm chilling. Excited what we got for today. I'm excited, I'm excited. Yes, sir. Let's just hop right into it, man. Um, we about to talk about a lot of things, but the first thing on the agenda is my fucking simps. Now I want I wanted to start off with this right away. When I told Dark Side this, he thought it was funny. So uh, you know we might as well start off with this shit. Now the reason why I brought this to y'all attention, you know, um because not from my pro I'm not a simp. I'm not I'm not one of those simple. Um, but I've been seeing a lot of, of occurrences, you know, uh fresh and fit, who y'all may know, those fucking bozos. And then you got a plethora of other people, you know, limping. Those a you ASMR niggas are you you are you, you you niggas need to stay in the house. You niggas that be simping over them you, yeah, y'all y'all are one of those. But dog side, what's your what's your thoughts on these simps, man? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to break it to them. I mean, I've seen a few in my time. I mean, you know, unfortunately, our guy Prezi, I'd be, I'd be in some of Prezi soon when we switch, when we switching over, when we get, when we get converted. I don't know. Some of them, some of them be wilding. Some of them be wilding, man. I mean, hey, you like what you like. You like what you like. But I, I let's just say I've been exposed to things I didn't want to be exposed to after we get converted over by Prezi. I'm just in there chilling, was watching some nice UFC gameplay. Watching the sick man Prezi go crazy in UFC, playing for eight hours a day. Don't know how he do it. I mean, I guess that's, that's probably the cause why we switching over and going sit mode. You know? <laughs> I mean, I need I need somebody looking on the mic too while I was playing UFC right. for eight hours. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't hold him. I can't hold it against him for that, man. But you know, maybe taking it a bit far. I mean, I can see you going into the stream. You pop into the stream. That's cool and all. But then when I think where it gets wild is. We start donating. We start. We try. We start trying to get our name up on the screen. Get our name up on the big board. Like, it be getting ugly in there. It be getting ugly. Yeah, it be getting belo beloved. Draw me on your body, bro. I literally saw one new, bro. Dude, bro. Dude was going crazy. Dude was like, f I forgot, but he was saying some real limp. You uh, listen. There's a difference between a simp and a limp. When you replace that S Y L, my guy, you're you're officially one of those. You're a limp. A limp. You you're a salivating, my nigga. You're you're one of the niggas that will let a girl cheat on you and then like be asking her for forgiveness. She's like you're that's a limp, my guy. Like you, like there's people like 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 this out here, my guy, and. I will listen. I'm not gonna lie. All right, I'm kind of. I ain't gonna say I, I'm in love or I'm sprung, but I'm kind of catching feelings a little bit. Not, 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 not too much. You know, you know, JMMA. You know, future Jana building. You know, I'm not. We we don't do that over here. <laughs> you know, but you know, I'm kind of catching feelings a little bit. You know, and I had to had to let myself know. You better not start simping, my guy. You know, you got you got to keep that through your mind, cause you know on Twitch. <laughs> Uh, what, what's, what's that girl name, man? A A Maras, y'all, you know, yeah, bro, yeah, she be going crazy, man, <laughs> crazy, bro, the fucking limps, dog. Like, that, that, that's honestly crazy that Sims have clearly given people like a whole new path to clout. Like, that's literally insane to me. Like, she can literally be sitting there eating fucking pineapples and not say a word, my nigga, and niggas will be donating. The paycheck to her. That, that's just insane. That like that's <laughs> it's getting, it's getting wild over there. It's getting real wild over there. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. That's like that's really crazy. <laughs> that's crazy to me. But let's move on, man. Um let's get back into sports, man. You gotta get that all out of our brain, man. Let's get back into the real world, man. Out of the sim world. Um Shakur Stevenson, man. Um he's gonna be fighting Oscar. Uh, I don't know what's in the T Valdez. Um, on April thirtieth, I believe that is the same day as um the big super fight Serrano versus Katie Taylor. Um, dog side. Well, let, let, let's just go over. Let's go over the the the, the super fight first. How do you how, like? How you see that playing out? Well, face value. 
if we're just going off who I got winning the fight, I'm taking Amanda Serrano. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Serrano over Katie Taylor. I think to beat Katie Taylor, she's gonna have to show it's gonna have to be the best version of herself to beat Katie Taylor because Katie Taylor obviously ain't no slouch. She's definitely not no slouch. I think Serrano can win, but I think if she wants to stop Katie Taylor, like people talk about, like you heard Bob Aaron talking about nobody watches women fights and things like that. If they want to put a statement about women's fights, if Amanda Serrano stops Katie Taylor in that fight, that will go viral, that will blow up. But to do that, she's going to have to be like the best version we've ever seen of her to be able to stop Katie Taylor. Yeah. Katie Taylor, that's a, that's a tough task. That's a very tough task. I have her by, I have her, my official prediction would be by decision. I think she can get her by decision. I, I see it very, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very hard to stop Katie Taylor. And I oh. definitely don't see Katie Taylor being able to stop Amanda Serrano because we know she's the technician. Yeah. Type. She's not going to be able to yeah. stop Amanda Serrano, but that's going to be a good fight. That's going to be a good fight. For sure. Yeah, bro. Like you say, Katie Taylor really just be, she be point fighting. And in my opinion, man, Amanda Serrano really didn't look amazing in her last mm -hmm. fight and that's what's kind of worrying because if she if she was she I, let's be honest she she gassed she gassed in her last fight you do that against katie taylor <laughs> you're gonna be in for a long mm -hmm. night peace dog up. pieced up and amanda amanda serrano man i'm gonna go i'm gonna go amanda serrano by split decision at first i had her by ud but after her last fight uh i'm not doing that i'm gonna go split i'm gonna, I'm gonna play it safe but i'm gonna go her by the ud i just think the speed if if amanda serrano literally trains her ass off i think she can stop kayla taylor before like seven rounds like because she I has think, the, yeah. yeah she has the power she has the speed she has the, the aggressiveness to you know keep kaylee taylor from you know point fighting per se mm -hmm. so i think i think she can do it but man it's gonna it's, bro that's good it's, it's gonna be tough that's man tough yeah, that's, that's tough, tough. Man. that's tough and also the problem with uh how the fight way amanda serrano fights especially going against somebody like katie taylor you notice in most of her fights when she's she she has a problem i think when she's being very offensive going after her opponent he gets hit a lot and when she's being defensive and not getting hit, she doesn't have the same type of offense. So either it's either she's going all gas and she's taking punches while she's going after her opponent, or she's being defensive, but she doesn't have that same type of offense. If she does the latter and she stays defensive and doesn't have the same type of offense, she's going to get picked apart by Katie Taylor. She'll get picked apart. But on the other side of that, she can get picked apart trying to get aggressive, too aggressive with Katie Taylor as well. So that's why I said she's going to need to be the best version of herself to be able to win that fight because she showed up how she showed up in her last fight i don't think that's gonna build very well going against somebody like katie taylor so it's gonna be a good fight though i'm excited for that yeah one. i'm excited for that too and we're gonna go over to uh the the mismatch of the evening fucking <laughs> oscar valdez and shakur oh, yeah. i'm honestly I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I see absolutely no one being Shakur at 130. I'm like, I'm gonna keep it a bug. After what he did to Jamel Herring, who I saw as a, a gritty fighter, and he, the fighter who gets better as the rounds go on, literally that 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 shocked the shit out of me. He completely shut down Jamel Herring, like shut him down, then let him get get that jab off, which he he had a real good jab. Sh bro, Shakur just piecing his ass up. And as the rounds go on, he was getting more and more aggressive. That's the crazy thing. Usually, as the mm -hmm. as the fight goes on, and people are like starting to you know gain momentum, they start to kind of like point fight. Nah, Shakur, the the fight went on, the yeah. more aggressive he got. I'm gonna be honest. Mindset. Oscar Velda is about to get fucked up. If I'm being, he might he might want to go cheat, my guy. I ain't gonna let eat shit. Even when he did cheat, he, shit, he barely won his last fight. You know, <laughs> shit. So. <sighs> man i don't and know man i wish i could give you some controversy on this take but i really can't i, lo I mean i love shakir stevenson man. i love his style i love his style because he's a technician with also a killer mindset he's not just going to point fight you and be be you know happy taking the decision he's a technician with a killer mindset so once he figures you out he's going to beat you down slowly until he wears you out until he has you so he gets you to the point where he can stop you and I think the big thing about this fight is, like, people saw Valdez versus Consensal, and how Consensal has, like, that outside fighter type of style, was able to keep Valdez at bay for most of the fight before he just started clowning and just lost his focus in that fight. 
and let Valdez back in in the back end. But like, Shakur, if he gets, he's gonna put like, he's gonna put the fire on Valdez. I mean, I think I got, I probably got Shakur stoppage by by the seventh. I think, I think he's gonna stop Valdez. I mean, Valdez is main weapon. This is something I noticed about Shakur in this fight. And this is maybe we'll talk about this a little bit later too. Is also why I think he might do well against somebody like Lomachenko. But I'll leave I'll leave that for now. But I think what's good about Shakur is his he's so smart. That's the biggest thing about him. So if you have one main weapon, if he knows you have one main weapon, I can't see like we all know Oscar Valdez's left hook. That's like his go-to. Yeah, punch the go-to. He bro. always is gonna go for. I cannot see Shakur going into this fight getting hit by that left hand. He knows if he knows it's coming, you have no chance of touching him. I mean, his connect, his opponent's connect rate against him is already historically low as is. So if you have one, a one-punch tell where he knows that's what you want to do, he's just going to take that away from you. I think he's just going to piece Valdez up until he stops him on it. Yeah, I, I'm going to be Oscar Valdez. Listen, no disrespect to you. I mean, I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. I really don't like you. I'm not going to say I don't like you as a fighter or a person. It's just because of what you did, my guy, and who you hang around with, <coughs> Cheat Nello. Um, it, it, it just surprises me that as athletes, y'all don't know what y'all putting inside of y'all body. Listen, every time I hear an athlete talk about, oh, I didn't know, you know, I just let my know you're lying, you're you're lying your ass off. You're at, come like, come on, bro. L listen, I'm not even an athlete, and I, I I watch everything that I put in my body, and you're fighting for money, so I knew for sure you should be what. You're not fooling nobody. Shut you. No, come on, Canelo. You're not. No, you're not fooling mm -hmm. nobody. But speaking of super fights and everything, making super fights, Jake Paul, bro. Listen, I don't like you. Be honest with you. I really don't like you. I don't like what you're doing for boxing. I don't like your intentions for the UFC fighter pay. But one thing I believe 100% everyone should respect is what he's doing for women's boxing. Um, if y'all don't know, he's co-promoting uh, the Serrano Taylor fight with Eddie Hearn. This is like big. Jake Paul since around the Ben Askren fight has kind. Of, I, I don't want to make it seem like Amanda Serrano is not her own person, but he's kind of taking her under his wing to elevate her in women's boxing. And y'all can see that it kind of worked because the more she fought on Jake Paul's card, now the anticipation for the Kaylee Taylor fight. Kaylee Taylor's already a big name. Amanda Serrano, not too many people knew about her, you know, the purest boxing fans. Now that she's on that main scale because of, you know, Jake Paul's cards and things, now that fight, now it's an actual super fight now, which is crazy. So I, you got to kind of come in with Jake Paul, to, you know, it's doing, right? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. There. I mean, you can't deny what he's done. I mean, he said he was going after her last fight. And actually, leading up to her last fight, he said he wants to get Serrano versus Taylor. You know, he wants to get that fight made. I mean, it's made. You can't you can't argue with the results. You might not like him. Plenty of people don't like him. You know, shout out to Poe. Poe definitely don't like him. <laughs> but you know, you know, you can't you can't hit on what he's trying to do. Now, some people are saying like when he's talking about UFC fighter pain things like that, he's just talking to talk, or he's not really he doesn't really care about the fighters and things like that. Hey, he made the big fight that he wanted to make happen happen. He's out there promoting with Eddie Hearn. I mean, I don't think anybody would have really suspected that when he first mentioned that, like, oh, he's going to be trying to actually promote a fight with Eddie Hearn. Like, yeah, okay, sure you are. You know, that's all talk, but here we are, man. You can't really deny what he's done and what he's trying to do out here. So you got to give the man his props. Facts, man. Y'all get that, y'all get that man his credit, you know. I'm always on listen if I don't like you, you know what I'm saying? But if you're doing something that's respectable, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna give you your credit, you know what I'm saying? Everybody deserves the credit for the work they putting in. Jake Paul, mm -hmm. you know, shout out to you for putting on for women's boxing. Um, I wanted to say this, but I forgot now that uh, now I'm thinking about it now. Honestly, whoever wins this fight is gonna be the, the number one pound for pound fighter in women's. I think that's no disrespect oh, to yeah. that's no disrespect to Clarissa Shields, but like Clarissa Shields literally has washed everybody <laughs> that she's fought, so it's kind of like it's it's getting old at this point it's just like okay you're like you're beating everybody you're like you're not ex you're not exciting like amanda serrano she's going mm -hmm. out finishing people katie taylor going out there putting on performances technician fights you know the carissa shields going out there dog walking people but it's like against who though you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. the depth the depth in her division yeah. really isn't there Oh, yeah, I, I mean, forgot it's, to say it's that. It's practically not her. It's not her fault either that she's just dominating everybody's division. I mean, she's obviously a great fighter, fantastic fighter in my opinion. 
but it's not her fault she's dogging everybody. But like this is like the fight that both Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano need to like cement themselves as that number one pound for pound. Like those are two high level competitors right there. I mean those are the I mean who we just named Clarissa Shields, uh, Katie Taylor, and Amanda Serrano it was probably like the three best women boxers in sport right now. Really, if you really think about it. And for two of them to be going up against each other, I mean, that's huge. The ones that, I could definitely uh, see them taking over that number one pound for pound spot. I mean, me me, per, me personally, I think Amanda Serrano is almost, pretty much, I think most people, if they have a grab against Amanda Serrano, it's really that big, big name on her resume that she's fought. I mean, this would just be icing on the cake for her to take over that spot. And vice versa with Katie Taylor. People said she struggled against lesser competition. They don't know if she's really at that high level but if she goes ahead and takes out amanda serrano and she's right there too all right so it is a big fight for both women looking for i'm really looking forward to that fight more than an oscar veldez fight but the fight that I am looking forward to with Shakur stevenson oh, yeah. is his lomachenko so there's been talk some talk it. Um, on Twitter, shout out to Uncage Media, shout out to Jindo and all those guys. You know, he brought up the assumption that how does Shakur Stevenson beat Lomachenko? I, I, I'm gonna be, he, he, I say he's gonna, it's gonna be obliteration. He's not like Lomachenko is not gonna be able to touch Shakur Stevenson. Like I'm, like I'm gonna keep it funky with you. Uh, like Dark Side said, Lomachenko's best weapon is his footwork and IQ. Um, mm-hmm. Shakur Stevenson. Has, has footwork too he has iq too he, it, it's just like yeah. you make one adjustment he's gonna take away that 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 it is like he he's like he's like an android you know he, he takes away the first adjustment so he so he knows you know that iq take away that well you can really can't take away iq but you know you take away that footwork he's like damn lomachenko still got that iq but he's ready for that that's the crazy thing if he forces you to make the adjustments he that you that you, he, he knows what you're gonna do before you do it that's what i'm trying that, that's what i'm trying to say he's gonna that you know he's gonna beat lomachenko at his own game um lomachenko usually likes to likes to take two to three rounds to kind of download everything and you know shakur stevenson usually likes to turn things up from from that bell on so that's gonna be real tough for lomachenko I'm not. I'm gonna give Lomachenko his respect. Um, I give him. I I see him winning like two rounds. I'm being honest. That's at best. I see him winning two rounds. Uh, and uh, oh. I I I think you he wins by you UD. Got a dog walking. Yeah, it's gonna be a dog. After what he did to Jamil Herring, bro. Because Jamil Herring, he's not a similar fighter to Lomachenko, but they they both you know usually turn things up. You know. In the later rounds, they usually like to see what the opponent is doing and turn it up. It's two different styles of that, but mm-hmm. in a general sense, it's the same thing. And well, after what he did to Jamel Heron, I'm like, oh yeah, nobody's beating this dude. Uh, I'm sorry, Lomachenko. No, I no. Come on now. This no. is like a dream matchup for me because two of my favorite fighters in boxing right now is Shakur and it's Lomachenko. I love them both. This is a tough fight for me to pick personally because I think they're just two absolutely just amazing fighters, really. But I think it still comes down to what I kind of spoke about earlier, which is do you have something that you rely on as your main weapon? Now, similar to uh, uh, Alexander Usyk, who's uh, also trained by Lomachenko's uh, dad, they like to do the foot. It's also it's his IQ, like you mentioned earlier, his IQ, his footwork. But a lot of it, when he uses that footwork, comes into that straight left hand that he throws a lot. You watch against Nakatani, he was just, that's what he lit Nakatani up with. Him. He was lighting Nakatani Comey, ass up. Comey, <laughs> in the brakes off of him with that straight, that straight left is like his main weapon he will use. When he's pivoting around you, as soon as he pivots around you, what's coming down the pipe, the straight that's left. That's straight, hand. yeah. If Shakur can identify your main weapon, I don't think you can hit him with it. I just don't think he's too smart to get hit repeatedly with the same punch over and over again. I mean, people are having problems landing the most basic punch on him, which is the jab. People are barely hitting him with, with a jab. So imagine you trying to throw straight left. You're trying to throw hook like Valdez is going to be trying to do. Like, it's going to be. Off the pivot. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Nah. And plus, we know that Shakur and Loma have sparred in the past. And I, from everything I've heard about that sparring, is that Loma was trying to break Shakur down, but he couldn't do it. And Shakur was holding his own. And that was years ago. Before Shakur is where he is now. So 
That's something I would really like to see. I'd have Shakur by decision. I don't think he could stop Lomachenko. I mean, that would be if you could stop Loma. That, that's that's massive right there. But it's it's so hard to imagine stopping somebody like Lomachenko because just like Shakur, he's also smart and he's very crafty and evasive. So I don't I don't know if you can just stop him. I know you could probably point fight him. I know hit him with some shots. Because even in the Comey fight, when Loma was dominating for most of the fight, he was getting hit by Comey with some big shots in that fight. He was taking some in that fight. But I can't. I don't think I've seen one fight of Shakur's where I'm like, he's taking a little bit too many punches. I think he should be just walking this guy. Like, why is he eating these shots? Like, really, when I watch Shakur's fight, it's, it's like it's the opposite. Really, it's like, dang, this dude can't even land a single punch. <laughs> like, golly, like, I'd, be, I'd be frustrated too. This man, is trying, he can't hit him with a jab. He's trying everything. He can't hit him with nothing. I mean, especially in the Jamel fight, in the hair, in the herring fight, like that was insane. Like I was like, okay, at some point he's gonna start landing some punches. So I'm just waiting round, round, one round passes, next round passes. I'm like, okay, that's starting to get a little bit late. He ain't still ain't landing no punches really. <laughs> then it just got worse and worse. Now he's now he's just getting teed off on by Shakur. I'm like, ah, we. Yeah, that's what I'm you know, saying. So, I don't know. I think Shakur is gonna be future pound for pound number one in my opinion. He just special man he's special yeah he's special and um i'm gonna talk about this last thing man speaking of special fighters uh floyd with mayweather man um be honest with you big dog we all respect you but um javante davis is about to be 30 years old man stop treating this motherfucker like a little kid dog and javante davis mm -hmm. listen i know floyd has done great things for your career bro but you gotta you don't want to end up like a b I'm gonna be honest with you. You really don't want to end up like AB. You saw the the longer AB stayed away from the top competition, the more overconfident he got. He, and when he fought Marcus Maidana, got his ass beat the fuck up and was crying. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. It's mm -hmm. starting to look like yeah, that for Javante Davis. How they trying to protect him, you know, protect him, give him a name here, you know. But it's a winnable fight. Give him a name there. Keep protecting this dude from the top people at 135, bro. I'm telling you. When Javante Davis meet that dude, he's going to get his ass beat. In my opinion, after what I've seen in a Gamboa, Gamboa fight, the the Barrios fight, and who did he last fight? Isak Cruz. Cruz. I don't, I, I'm not a believer in Javante Davis anymore. It's just, it's power. That, like, that, honestly, I, like, that's it. Like his power, and then people keep talking about. Well, he fought his last fight with one hand. You 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 think Javante Davis not the only one that goes into a fight with an injury? Like I'm I'm so tired. Like if you go into a fight with an injury, you win. Don't say nothing. You wasn't gonna say nothing anyway. Like just don't say nothing. You wasn't saying nothing leading up to it. Don't I don't I don't care about that. But we talking about in the you got your ass in the ring, right? So I don't want to hear about oh my hand was broken. None of you you got in the ring, so no excuses. He looked bad in that fight, even though he won convincingly. He didn't look good, and like he didn't. It wasn't anything. I was like, okay, this dude, he's a world beater. It's just like, okay, he beat Isa Cruz on short notice. By the way, I didn't even mention that. Beat Isa mm -hmm. Cruz, and Isa Cruz took away. Dude, listen, I just like how we setting ourselves up. We talking about taking away the best punch. We Isa Cruz was taking away Javante Davis's best punch, which is the uppercut. Literally took yep, that yep, away, yep. Mm -hmm. took it away. So it's yeah. like, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't, well, I don't know. Man. Here's what I think about Tank as well. It's shout out to Fanatico for this too, because Fanatico has a very similar viewpoint on this. As both of us do. We, but all three of us are in unison in this word. You can only fight from behind and rely on your power for so long against the competition. I mean, all the fights you named earlier, Barrios, uh, Isak Cruz. I mean, Gamboa, multiple fights where Tank has been down in fights. He's been down on the cards against people he shouldn't be down against. And then relying on that power to come back and get that knockout. I mean, look how long it took against Barrios to get that knockout. That fight was all, it's getting to like the, the final couple rounds where it was about to go to decision. So, I mean, you can only rely. I don't see Tank. Tank's relying a little bit too much on his power, I think. And I also think it's due to the fact that the competition he's facing, he knows he can always come. He's, he's thinking... Like, I can always come back and stop them. I still got time to stop them, basically. But, like, that's not going to work against the elite competition because they're going to know, I have you down. I'm not going to let you stop me now. I'm going to fight on the outside. I'm not going to let you try to get your typical shots off. Like, everybody at the top of 135. I mean, you get down against Lomachenko. 
I mean, you might be able to snag Haney because we know that man's basically chinny. But, but, but besides, besides, besides Haney, you can stay on the outside. You can down get somebody like uh, Haney, uh, can even Cambosis. People like that, I mean, come on, man. You're not going to be able to just rely on getting the knockout punch in the later rounds. You're At some point, you're going to have to make the decision to fight the higher competition and to actually box more in the beginning of the fight and stop relying purely on your power because tank i think is a smart fighter tank is smart i think it's the level of competition that's starting to hurt him now he's fought so many people at a lower uh basically lower talent level than he is like what fight have we seen tank go into where we're like oh i don't know if he can get this one this is a close fight this is no fight like that so far <laughs> nobody thought barrios was going to beat tank nobody thought isaac cruz was going to beat tank we need that fight where it's like okay now we got that high level competition because otherwise, like you said, AB, you start building that confidence, you're beating all these people that are below your skill level, you're getting that confidence. Then once you get to somebody on the higher level and you realize, oh, this is this is a little bit different. And, you mm-hmm. know, it's like that. But, you know, running through Floyd, Floyd's going to give him those good fights. Not fights that he's fighting cans necessarily, but he's fighting people below that high echelon of skill. You all know right. what I'm saying? All right. Like, especially when they're talking about him versus Roley, like, at this point, Tank should not be fighting Roley at all. Like he should be fighting only the upper echelon of the division. There should be no other. He should be asking for nobody below the top four in that in that division right now. There should be nobody else he's looking at. Because people are saying that Roley has a chance against Tank. That's just like, come on, that's wishful thinking. Mm-hmm. Roley has no deep no. wild punches. That's another easy fight, I think, for Tank to win. So at this point, I think he needs higher level competition ASAP. Otherwise. It's gonna be a detriment on his career. Yeah, fuck, uh, Lil B Hop. Uh, what's his name? What's his real name? Fuck, dude, I just had it. It's on the tip of my freaking tongue. Just fuck King mm-hmm. Tut. Just fuck King Tut. Um, shit, what's his name? Fights at one thirty. What's his name? Chris. Uh, uh, Colbert. Chris Colbert. He talking about he he a fight take at one thirty five. That's one of the fights I'm looking like, okay, yeah. Tank can definitely, he can 100% get washed in that fight. Mm-hmm. And that would be a good fight for for Tank in general. And like you said, Tank, bro, I'm not saying Tank is trash. He, like, he has, yeah. he, he has skill. Like, he can, like, box. He can, he can do yeah, the like outside said, thing. Just yeah. Like, just like AB. AB is, like, one of the most talented boxers. But he just didn't have the competition. And then he got too confident relying on his skills. And we saw his downfall from there. And uh listen, Javante, if I'm you, if I'm sitting in this in this position, I'm saying, okay, Floyd, I thank you for everything. Cause even you got Floyd trying to coach you from the crowds. Listen, if Floyd Mayweather wants to be in your corner, he needs to be in your corner. If not, don't you shouldn't even be shutting out your other coaches. And I was talking, me and Dot talked about this. It's like what if you're a coach what do you do because you really it's floyd mayweather so you're gonna say shut the fuck up floyd you're like let me cut like you're not gonna say anything you're gonna let him cook like you're gonna let him coach (laughs) so yeah so like javante davis you gotta kind of like you gotta like step up you gotta be like hey look floyd listen this is my team you know what i'm saying let me rock i don't want these scrubs no more let me get that top four because you you can't keep walking around asking for respect and then the body of work you had deems that you deserve absolutely no respect you know what i mean so you gotta you you, you can't be doing that so come on tank i need i need to see you you know step up this comp listen Go fight Ryan. Ryan Garcia is fighting a scrub mm-hmm. in April in, or March or something. He's fight. He, we all know he's fighting the absolute. It hasn't been announced, but knowing <laughs> so you know, yeah, Oscar, so you know. Oscar De La Hoya, they're they're giving him a scrub. Like, like let's be honest, they're giving him a scrub. He's gonna call you out, and he's gonna win the fight, and he's gonna call out Javante Davis. That's that's literally one of the biggest fights at one thirty five. Yep, Please just make that fight, Leonard. Leonard Elber, uh, listen, uh, L. Heyman, Leonard, all y'all at, at 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 money. Please make this fight, man, because I'm so tired of seeing Tank fight. If he if he want to fight Jose Lenores after his his next fight, bro, I'm done. I don't want to see another <laughs> Tank fight, bro. Like um, like you had Leonard on Twitter trying to sell Isak Cruz like he's this like no yeah. Isak no he's not like that no. <laughs> he's not like that. Uh, he's not know, like they had that. To try. They had to try. <laughs> <laughs> he's not like that, man. But 
we gonna end it off right here, man. It's been episode one. Um, if we, you know, what I'm saying, I, I had fun doing this. Um, we we gonna we definitely gonna do this again for episode two. We're gonna cook mm-hmm. up some more topics. You know, we did this was just a little. A, this is a pilot episode. You know what I'm saying? It's a pilot episode. You know, but. Shout out to Darkseid for agreeing with this with me. Actually, this was Darkseid's idea. If y'all don't know, uh, put in my application for that Full Sin podcast. Darkseid <laughs> was like, you might as well start your own podcast. I was like, mm, my brother, you smart. Black owned podcast. Black owned. I like that. I like that. I like that. So I'm like, okay. So if y'all like this, man, uh, like, comment, subscribe, man. Share if you knew. Um, shout out to Darkseid once again. Darkseid, you got anything else to say, bro? I don't know, man. Appreciate you for having me on. You know, I thought this would be a great idea to chop it up, talk some boxing, talk some overall sports. I had a good time, and I know I can't wait to be back. It was fun. Yes, sir. See y'all next time. Y'all know what time it is. Peace out, friends. Ready, lovers. Come on, yo, man. It's been your boy Jamie, man. Do something productive with your day, beating your meat. It's not productive. Come on now. No, not November. And it's Black History Month. I better be seeing y'all out there supporting Black creators, man. Come on now. Y'all, y'all give, y'all give the other eleven months to the white man. Come on, black creators. Come on now. See y'all next time, man. It's been your boy in a moment.